We are continuing on with our NHL offseason plan series. Now we're looking at the 29th ranked team from the NHL's regular season, the Philadelphia Flyers. We're going to analyze their season and decide what they're likely to do this offseason. It could be quite some drastic changes. And that's coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we're continuing on with our NHL offseason plan series today. Looking at the Philadelphia Flyers. So in case you're new to this series, we're going to break this up into four segments. First segment, we're going to quickly recap their regular season stats and take a look at how things went. Segment two, we're going to take a look at their salary cap space and see what they have committed for contracts next season and beyond. Thirdly, we're going to take a look at any outstanding or expiring contracts coming up that need to be dealt with this offseason, so any restricted or unrestricted free agents. And then lastly, in segment four, the most lengthy segment of the video, we're going to take a look at what we call the top burning questions facing this franchise as they move into this offseason. So let's take a look first at segment one, where we're going to look at and recap their 21-22 NHL regular season. So as we know, this was a disastrous year for the Philadelphia Flyers. Many people, themselves included, myself included, thought they'd have a chance at challenging for playoffs or a wildcard spot at the very least. Uh, they had made some decent moves, at least it looked like they did in the last offseason, and they were poised to come back and be better than the year before. But they finished with a 25-46-11 and record for 61 points, well out of the playoffs, uh, obviously, this is the fourth worst team uh, in the NHL. Um, really a disastrous, disastrous season. They were the worst team in the league when it comes to scoring goals. Only 210, so that's dead last. Goals against, they allowed 294, which was 27th best. So, again, not much better. The power play was also the worst in the NHL. 32nd at 12.6%. That is pretty bad. And the PK was 75.7%. Not great either at 26 percent uh we we saw a lot of things go wrong for the flyers this year we saw some significant injuries to players like ryan ellis who only played four games after coming over from nashville sean couturier went down with a severe injury which he missed the bulk of the season as well and uh, of course some other poor results led to a coaching change with elaine vigno being dismissed and mike yo taking over as an interim head coach who we now know will not be returning, at least in that capacity. He possibly might work for the Flyers in a different role, but he won't be the head coach behind the bench as we enter next season. So now let's take a look at their salary cap situation and where they finish with the regular season and how they are entering the offseason as next year officially gets underway, at least calendar-wise. Now, they finished the year uh, with $75.3 million in used cap space. I mean, they had seven. $0.1 million available as we head into the offseason here. And they have 16 contracts committed for next season or beyond. So that would mean that of the players that are on expiring deals, normally teams carry 22, 23 players. Uh, so we're looking at probably, you know, uh, anywhere from six or seven players that are going to have to be replaced or re-signed. And I would think that uh, it's going to be a bit of both when it comes to what they're going to do so of course those salary cap graphs are courtesy of our friends at capfriendly.com a terrific resource to help take a look at all salary cap situations for the entire nhl uh, in the next segment we're going to take a look at their expiring contracts so who are their rfas and unrestricted free agents so starting with the rfas who are players that are much more likely to return in this case we have owen tippett who was the main player acquired in the Claude Giroux trade from the Florida Panthers. We also have Morgan Frost, as well as Zach McEwen, who they had picked up earlier in the year from the Vancouver Canucks. So obviously Tippett and McEwen certainly um, you know, were nice additions. Frost had an expanded role for a change, and he's going to hopefully continue to uh, to grow into a more of a role with the Flyers. Uh, certainly you know, a little bit later than they were hoping for. He's been a little slower to develop, but hopefully he'll get to where they hope he will be one day on the ufa side of things i don't know that we're going to see many or any of these players really return we've got veteran center iceman nate thompson uh keith yandel of course who broke the iron man streak this year uh, many believe is retiring but that's not been 100 percent confirmed uh defenseman kevin connaughton as well as nick sealer doubtful that either of those guys come back goaltender martin jones of course backed up carter hart this year uh, i don't think he'll be back you never know i guess i mean 
I'm not really sure what the Flyers are going to do with their goaltending situation. To me, they need to have a guy who can kind of battle with Carter Hart, and I'm not sure Jones is that guy, but we'll get into that here in the next uh, segment as well. And, of course, Sam Moran, of course, unfortunately is going to be forced to retire due to the, all the significant injuries, mostly to his knees that he's suffered really ever since um, he's been a pro hockey player even before that. So, uh, unfortunately, they made the tough announcement here. Chuck Fletcher did that Moran is uh, not able to continue. Apparently, Moran knew right around Christmas time that this was going to be the reality he was facing. It's uh, unfortunate for such a promising young man who had a high draft pick and had a lot of potential and just could never stay healthy to have a real shot at legitimately cracking a full-time NHL spot and making the best of it. But the Flyers do appear open to working with him in some capacity to see if there's another job within the organization that they can somehow help him work with them and continue being part of the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, let's move on to the fourth and final segment of the video, uh, which will be a little bit lengthier here, where we discuss the top burning questions facing the Philadelphia Flyers and what are their main objectives heading into the offseason. Question number one is, who is your new head coach? To me, that's something that's going to be pretty important to help I kind of solidify an identity for this team. It's also going to be big in kind of helping you make some personnel changes to a degree as well. Not that the GM has to rely on the coach to do that, but certainly you want to you know kind of know what your coach is going to be, how are you going to play, what are your systems going to be, and what players kind of best suit that. Uh, so I would think they wouldn't want to wait too long uh, to have a coach in place, but at the same time, they're not going to rush. They may have to wait for teams in the playoffs to be eliminated to talk to different candidates that they might be interested in. Um, so we'll see where things go. I mean, a couple of names that kind of jump out as being the, I, I think this is just my little list of potential candidates. Uh, I'm sure there will be others and likely others that they will speak to, but Vancouver Canuck coach Bruce Boudreaux comes to mind after we learn that the Canucks are interested in having him back, but only if they're willing to activate the club option for the next season, and that's it, not an extension. So, you know, if Boudreaux doesn't want to coach on a one-year deal, he very well might not agree to that, and he could end up departing. And you just never know. It's not a given that even though things went well with him in Vancouver, that he will be back. He has a history with GM Chuck Fletcher, who uh, had a hand in hiring him in Minnesota. Uh, of course, uh, Fletcher ended up leaving long before Boudreaux did. Uh, he ended up staying under Bill Guerin for a while, but still those two know each other. They've obviously gone through this kind of process before, and he's uh, you know one of the greatest uh, winningest coaches in, in league history. Uh, who's looking for some, um, I guess, employment security, you could say. And he's coming off a season where he came in and took over a team partway through and showed he can still be a great coach and knows how to get results. So I, I would think he'd be at least be a name they would, they would talk about. Uh, Rick Tockett would be a name that comes to mind, of course, a longtime former flyer. If this team wants a coach that can be that somebody who can kind of, you know, teach them a little bit more about defensive style, at the same time be hard on them to get the most out of them, Talkett could be that guy, um, you know, he's a former flyer, a long time, um, you know, NHL assistant coach. He's been a head coach a few times as well, currently working in media for Turner Television. Um, you got to wonder if he would want to get back into it. I don't know for sure, but to me, he's a name that I would at least think, that, again, that they'd want to talk to, um, you know, being a part of the alumni. And you have to wonder about Jim Montgomery. I mean, Montgomery is a guy who, uh, you know, obviously was coaching with the Dallas Stars, uh, we saw a period of time there where coaches were being let go uh, due to a lot of unforeseen circumstances. Like we saw the Bill Peters situation in Chicago, and it wasn't long after that Montgomery was let go. And it, we found out later that it was uh, basically due to a drinking problem. He was dealing with some addiction issues uh, and sought rehab. And he's really, you know, he lost a lot in his life. He went through uh, a good program, get himself clean. Uh, and he's been working with the St. Louis Blues, uh, who gave him a second chance. So it didn't take long to get a second chance. Not long after he was ready to go uh, and clean himself up. And he's been doing a great job. And you have to think that, uh, you know, after a few years of, uh, you know, showing that he can get himself as good as life in order, get himself on the straight and narrow here and doing good things with St. Louis, that there's going to be opportunities for him in a head coaching capacity. I mean, he was really known to as a, a tremendous head coach. Dallas really didn't want to let him go, but they knew that with the current state of where things were at with him, that they just couldn't let him continue behind the bench that he needed to get help. And he had to be let go for that reason. So to me, he, he's going to be starting to get consideration 
for head coaching jobs as they come up. And I would think the Flyers, again, would at least want to talk to him. But first and foremost, that's one of the big decisions Chuck Fletcher and the Flyers need to make this offseason. Now, of course, one of the quotes that I took from the uh, Chuck Fletcher uh, end-of-season media availability because he was asked to clarify uh, his comments he had made earlier around the time they did a coaching change um, about what their plans are. They're going to be rebuilding, retooling. And he said that at one point it was an aggressive retool is what they had kind of worded things. And now he said, you know what, kind of a bit of both. And I was a little bit confused by that. So I'm not really sure that you can really do both at the same time and do an effective job at each at the same time. But it sounds like uh, Fletcher and the Flyers are going to try. We know that ownership does not want to go through a rebuild. Uh, but at the same time, they I guess he wants to go through a little bit of one to kind of inject some youth. So they do want to change things up. They admitted that obviously that you know they, they're going to have to make some roster changes. They're probably going to want to get a little bit younger. They do have a few older players that might be time to go. Um, so, you know, what's it going to be? Rebuild or retool? I think they need a more clear-cut direction here and to stick with it and go here uh, in, in a direction or another. I mean, a lot of fans think they need a rebuild where they don't want that. They want to be able to get back into playoff contention as quickly as possible. And we've seen rebuilds take at least three to five years, in some cases more. Now, question number three is who are they going to move out? Uh, well, there's a lot of rumors around some veteran players being moved. There's talk about JVR with one year left, likely being a, a guy who could either be bought out or traded. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, some D-men like Provorov, Sanheim, or Ellis. There was a one point some rumors that Ellis might not want to be in Philadelphia, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I think that might have been a case of uh, a few things kind of getting blown out of proportion. Uh, but between Provorov or, or Sanheim, I I think there's a chance they would trade one of them to shake things up. I mean, we haven't really seen the best of Ivan Provorov. And it probably wouldn't hurt to have a fresh start for him. But I do wonder if they want to hang on to him for another season and see if they can get him and Ryan Ellis together to see if they can find that top pair of magic that they were hoping for when they brought Ryan Ellis in from Nashville. We'll see where they go. But I do expect some veteran guys to be traded. Travis Konechny, I know he's not like an older veteran, but certainly been there long enough that I think he's another guy that will seriously consider moving. I think that uh, they, you know, they feel he's got more and that a team might be able to take a chance on him to shake things up in that regard. So I wouldn't be surprised again to see them address uh, different areas of their team here between defense and the forward group amongst maybe some veteran forwards being traded out with the hopes of bringing in a little bit of younger talent, trying to if they can. It's not going to be easy, as well as maybe bringing in some different players to get some more chemistry and kind of go from there. Question number four is, are they going to be aggressive in free agency? Is that going to be how they decide to go about this retool? I mean, you know there's some big names out there that could hit free agency, like a Johnny Gaudreau, who's been rumored to be going back to Philly or, De or the Devils for a long time, and there's no reason right now for us to think he's leaving Calgary, but I do think it's a possibility that with the kind of money he's going to be commanding, if the Flames do have an early exit in the playoffs, that maybe that contract doesn't come to be. Maybe he does hit the market and become a UFA. I don't know. I mean, I know the fly, the Flames and the Brad Tree Living have said all the right things, saying that they plan to do everything in their power to make sure he gets signed. But at the end of the day, they can't force him. And if the team doesn't have success this year, will they want to consider change anyways? It's really difficult to say. But, I mean, if an aggressive rebuild or retool likely has to involve a little bit of free agency, as well as some trades with some veteran guys. So we'll see how that goes. But I would not be surprised if he hits the market if Goudreau is the player that we see. Now, of course, the, the other part is goaltending. What are they going to do? I mean, Carter Hart, I don't think, is going anywhere here as of right now. But I think it would be best if they brought in a goalie who can be a 1A, 1B with him, take the pressure off a little bit, not necessarily a cheap goaltender as a backup, at the same time, that's challenging to do with the salary cap too. So I don't know how they best do that, but they certainly need to address goaltending. It needs to continue to get better. Uh, and there's so many issues with this team. We could go on here for, for hours. Now, the last question I want to look at as well is the draft lottery. Is there a chance they could take this first round pick and trade it? It's probably going to be largely dependent on how things go with the NHL draft lottery. If they end up with a one or two spot by winning the lottery, I would think they'll probably hang on to that selection. But if they don't, and there's somewhere around 3, 4, 5, that would not be shocking if they could get themselves a high-end impact player for that pick or a pick combined with something else. 
I wouldn't be surprised as well. I mean, look at like a guy like, I don't know, I'm just throwing some names out there. This is, I'm not saying they're linked to them, but like, you know, a JT Miller or a Patrick Line or player like that that might be, you know, available. That could have an immediate positive impact on your team. Uh, that kind of player. I'm not saying that, like I said, they're not linked to those players, but, you know, those types that could be out there. Uh, would they consider doing that to use that top pick to get a guy now? Like that could be part of the aggressive retool. They don't necessarily want to use a first round pick and wait two or three years for that player to come in to have a shot at making an impact where they can get a player who can help them today, right? So that would not be one bit surprising at all. I could see their first round pick being an option as well as some of these veteran players hopefully being shopped for some younger players. But again, like I said, easier said than done. But even though that sounds like a lot, that is going to be a very busy season for the Philadelphia Flyers and for general manager Chuck Fletcher. Uh, there is some talk as well that Fletcher himself might be promoted into a different role within the organization, maybe a president or uh, some other you know, uh, senior advisor type role. And Daniel Briere could even take over as GM. We, that's even a possibility that we could see something like that too. So we'll see. It's going to be a very busy summer for the Philadelphia Flyers. This rebuild, retool, a little bit of both, as Fletcher likes to call it, could be confusing. It could be difficult to follow. I'm not sure that we're going to see a clear-cut plan followed to a T. So we're going to have to follow along with the Flyers and just see how this goes and what kind of team they can put on the ice next year. But hard to envision without a clear plan that it's going to be, you know, Easy to get a lot better. Now, can they get better just by getting guys back on an injury like Couturier and Ellis? Sure, that'll make a big difference, but it's only going to get them so far without changing the core issues of this team. Let me know your thoughts on the Flyers and what you expect down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.